we're gonna show you how to update or repair your BIOS without a CPU or RAM. Yeah, just a USB. So see how it says BIOS version FA1? That's not the correct one for the motherboard currently. So we're gonna do the flashing right now. There have been several updates. I've got it loaded on these different sticks. Now, it's common to have Q flash on motherboards, but some motherboards may skip it to save a little money. We think it's well worth it. So all you need connected to make this work will be your power supply, the ATX power cord, and the CPU power cord. This cord here is for RGB, and this one here is for the fan. Oh, you also need a motherboard. <laughs> so I'm gonna remove the fan. Yeah, this is the um, CPU cooler heat sink, and we have the fan for it right here. It's in. You have to look at a screwdriver from the angle for it to work. I have noticed that. <laughs> maybe, maybe you actually do. <laughs> Feel like Put our cryo sheet to the side. Cryo sheet. This is a contact frame. Uh, I mostly like it for aesthetics and ease of use. They say it cools it off more. It does take some of the radiant heat, but it actually protects your CPU from thermal paste, which is probably the best reason to use it. If you've got an Intel chip, they actually apply more even pressure and it actually improves things quite a bit. Oh, really? With the AMD chips, they're so flat that it's not necessary. Okay, don't break the motherboard. Oh my God, please. We've already had that happen. <laughs> All right, so we got the chip off. This is a 9800X3D. It's kind of an infamous yeah. CPU right now. All right, so we've completely removed... The CPU. The CPU. Now we're gonna take off the RAM. Set this to the side. So what, what's nice is because you don't need a CPU, and you don't need the RAM, you can flash your BIOS at any stage. Your BIOS gets corrupted, something else happens, your CPU burns out, or if you upgrade oh. your CPU to one that isn't on your BIOS list, you wouldn't be able to boot into your operating yeah. system. Yeah, or an issue which I had, and because we had Q Flash, we were able to work on it a little more. Now, it would have helped to have debug lights, but we didn't at the time. So this is an eight gigabyte FAT32 drive with the master boot record. We'll show you in a little bit how to do that with Rufus so you can make your own disc. The important part about this gigabyte X870i motherboard is that first off, you wanna make sure that you're putting the USB stick in the correct slot. So it goes in this top corner it says, it's labeled BIOS. Yeah, right? USB BIOS. At first we were confused with this because it says Q Flash Plus down here, and we thought that it was this USB port, but it is no. not this port. It is this port right here. Yeah, point to this. This is actually labeling the button, which also has an LED right here. Okay, so if you're familiar with building your own machine, <laughs> you might think you have to press the button down here to start the machine, but that's not what you have to do. All you do is put this in, make sure that your power supply is turned on. I'm gonna get a stopwatch just to see exactly how long. We've seen it's usually for, it's usually about six minutes in total. So we also have this Go debug lights, have the Q Flash Plus. It's so, very helpful. So all you do is press this here, or mm -hmm. it should take about four and a half minutes to do the flashing. You'll see up here, not only is the USB on this device flashing, but the Q Flash at, plus LED is flashing. Down here, you'll be at, I think, is it, no, it, is it CPU or RAM? It's um, CPU and then it moves to DRAM. It's usually at CPU. And then it, you could hear the beep for boot, but I don't think it'll boot without a CPU. So we'll have to put the CPU back in to verify that the BIOS is updated. Yeah, so we'll put the CPU back in, we'll put the RAM in, and then we're gonna boot it again and see if the version changed. There's been a lot of debate online as to whether or not you need an eight gigabyte card like this, or whether or not you can do a 32 gigabyte card, or a 64 gigabyte card, or a 128 gigabyte card. You can sometimes have a lot of trouble with these. The, the nice part is, is that if you use Rufus, it kind of takes care of all that complexity for you. You check the correct boxes, which we'll show you here. 
Now, this isn't an ad. Rufus is actually an open source project. So if you use Rufus and you set it to FAT32 or large FAT32, non-bootable with a master MBR, master boot record, then that's sufficient. There will be no other files on the drive after it formats. Yeah. Um, and then you just copy over up to two files. Now, the two files that I recommend are the BIOS, which should be the, the BIOS name dot the BIOS version number for gigabyte. Mm -hmm. And then you should copy a duplicate version of that file that is spelled gigabyte, all caps, Duh. dot B-I-N. Still going. Now, last time it was about four and a half minutes. We're at two minutes and 16 seconds. Some caveats. There are some problems that you might have experienced. You might have named the file wrong or anything like that. If something's going wrong, this will go on for like a few seconds, maybe 15 seconds, and then turn off. Mm -hmm. That's a signal that the Q Flash Plus started to read uh, the USB. And something wasn't working. But something wasn't correct. Yeah, something was not correct. So then it stops. What you want to make sure is that it's going on for a while. That means that it's actually working. Um, when we try to do this, <laughs> it's so silly. Gigabyte, so name nice. your products better. So this one is Gigabyte. X870i Ice Pro. Mm -hmm. Pro Ice, Aorus Pro Ice. Version, Version 1.0. But if you Google search for this board and go to the support <laughs> page where you download your BIOS, you will find that, that it takes you to version 1.0 or revision 1.0 version, version 1.1. 1.1. So mentally you might blink on that and think they're exactly the same, but they're not. And no. when we, tr we tried for like four or five hours to get this to work and it wouldn't work because we were trying to upload the wrong BIOS for the wrong board. We, The indicator that we noticed is we said, okay, the BIOS on our current, on the motherboard currently is FA1. Yeah, that was the clue. And once we figured that out, we looked and we saw that FA1 oh. I think it finished. Yep, four minutes, 15 seconds. FA1 was only on one specific revision. We also double checked the box. And so the moral of the story is really make sure that you know what version of the motherboard you have, including any revisions and any version numbers. All right, so now what we're gonna do, we're gonna take out the flash drive because we won't need it anymore. <clears throat> We're gonna be very gentle because we don't want to bend the pins. Yes, please. That's in there Wait, nice. Every single time I'm like holding my breath. I know, you're- <laughs> so scared. You, it's like where you're like, <gasps> All right, so I like to screw these in kitty corner first. And you do them a little at a time, right? Yeah, I keep them loose. So that there's even pressure. Yeah, I want to make sure that we actually did have that problem. We found something on my last motherboard. Yes, free. I don't know if it came or, from the manufacturer that way. I, mean, I don't know how we'd get copper wire, but. Our first, with the vertical Torx screw, like thumb tight. And then I just go around horizontally and do that again. Yeah, you can see that the BIOS version has changed, which shows us that Q Flash worked. You would already be on your way by now. Yeah, you'd already be finishing, completing your computer build or whatever repair you needed to do. Now we gotta put in the RAM. One, ooh, look at that click. In. Okay, this is probably like the hardest part. Now, I don't need to be perfect about this because we're like not going to benchmark it this way or anything like that. Yeah, we're not. This isn't our final build. All right, that's on. Ow. That's going. Now, you might be surprised to know this, but literally the motherboard manual says to short these pins up here. I can't hear it. Now it Here is. we go. It went from CPU to DRAM very fast. 
and we put a speaker on it so that we can tell when it boots and and it will also debug and let us know what if anything's wrong or where we're at in the boot cycle, which is really great. A decade ago, every motherboard had a little tiny speaker on it and it would give you little debug codes because they didn't have debug LEDs. LEDs were harder to get. They didn't mm -hmm. have seven segment displays. I think it just, oh, oh no. Speakers were on the motherboard and they would help you find out what's wrong. It'd help you find out if your RAM wasn't timing correctly. There, oh, did you hear it? That little beep was it saying, I'm ready. Boot is good. And there we go. We've got the latest BIOS now. BIOS version, version FA5D. BIOS version FA5D. Right here. So we could prove out that this worked for each of these other ones. We went through and tested it, and it does work with each one of them. You don't have to worry about the size of your USB drive. You don't have to worry whether it's 3.0 or 2.0. It just has to be USB-A and you have to be able to do FAT32 or extra large FAT32. As long as you have all of those factors correct, mm -hmm. then the USB stick will work with QFlash Plus. Yeah, we have literally tried every single one and we know all of these worked. Now, let's say that you're already in the BIOS and you don't wanna mess with QFlash Plus. You can also just take one of your USB keys here, plug it into probably any port, and we can come down here, Q flash. And we can say, sure. oh yeah. So you can go to file. And this, this way you can see the file name. And this is why I like to just leave both versions of them on there. Because if this drive only had gigabyte.bin, you wouldn't know what BIOS you were gonna flash. No, it's also helpful because what you can do is you can have a previous version and roll back easier. Right. So sometimes you might find that your memory doesn't work with a particular BIOS, or mm -hmm. you might read a news report and saying that there's a bug yes. or vulnerability with your particular BIOS. So in that case, you might wanna roll back. Um, with these 9800X3Ds, there's been problems with uh -huh. the chips been burning out and some of the versions of the BIOS have actually had problems. So like being able to roll back or roll or update forwards has been really beneficial. Yes, it has been very beneficial. And now it's, and this makes it easier. So the, the final way that you can update your BIOS is in the operating system, either FreeDOS, DOS, Windows, Linux, there's all sorts of boot environments that you can boot into an operating system and then boot, install the BIOS from that. QFlash Plus or doing it directly in your BIOS, probably the best way to do it. Yeah, it's the cleanest. Yeah, you, you've got the least dependencies. Because what do you have? You literally have two files. Okay, so, well. We'd love to know any comments or questions. The biggest problem we had with this one was Gigabyte's naming convention and <laughs> yes, getting it, it to was... work. Pretty if, confusing. If that had been less confusing, we could have done this in 10 minutes. Oh my gosh. As you can see, 